Welcome to Money Veterans, I'm Monica, and this is your weekly strategic update where we cut through the noise and focus on what really moves the markets. Less noise, more strategy. Chapter 1, Markets in Motion. The beginning of the week, 3rd of November, was bullish, driven by AI euphoria. Since the presidential elections in 2024, the S&P 500 has rallied almost 18%, fueled by the artificial intelligence narrative. Major tech firms made new AI announcements, reinforcing investor optimism. By Tuesday, 80% of S&P 500 companies had reported results above consensus, an impressive earnings season indeed. But valuation worries are rising. Analysts from major banks have suggested the possibility of a correction within the next 12 to 24 months. Meanwhile, tariffs are being challenged by the Supreme Court and the U.S. government shutdown is starting to bite. The administration will cut flight capacity by 10% across 40 major routes to ease pressure on air traffic controllers. Midweek brought a correction in AI stocks. Chinese exports declined in October and layoffs in the U.S. hit their highest level in 25 years. Concerning the crypto market, volatility was even stronger. Bitcoin slipped slightly below $100,000 a technical zone closely watched by many investors. The move reflected liquidity stress and risk reduction during the U.S. shutdown. Still, a potential rebound catalyst could come from the Treasury General account if liquidity injections resume once the shutdown ends. After the pullback, chart analysts note that Bitcoin continues to face selling pressure around the 106,000, 107,000 area. So what does this tell us? The market is starting to reprice the AI theme versus policy risk. Now, let's move to portfolio thinking. How professionals approach rebalancing after a volatile week. In professional management, the goal isn't prediction, it's control. Control of exposure, control of risk, control of correlations. Diversification and factor balance matter more than single trades. Imagine an investor with a 70-30 allocation. Equities versus cash. After volatility spikes, what signals might justify an adjustment? Professionals would look at volatility levels, sector rotation, liquidity stress, or factor behavior. And for example, if a portfolio was 70% crypto and 30% cash, a professional would monitor key technical zones, the levels widely watched by the market. Not to act impulsively, but to understand where liquidity or sentiment might shift. If those signals strengthen, some investors, depending on their own profile and strategy, might consider adjusting exposure. The focus isn't the move itself, it's the reasoning process behind it. In portfolio reviews, what matters is not the trade, it's the reason behind it. Chapter 3. Ideas and Themes. Multi-factor Analysis. Today we explore one of the most powerful frameworks in modern investing, the multi-factor analysis. What are the quantitative factors that truly drive performance? Many investors call themselves stock pickers or allocators, but what really matters is identifying the factors behind returns. The six key factors are momentum, value, quality, high dividend, low volatility, and size. Please, stay focused and concentrated. Take a cup of coffee or tea. We are going to develop and explain each of those six factors. First factor is momentum. Momentum means assets that have outperformed recently tend to keep outperforming in the short to medium term. It's driven by behavioral biases, under reaction to news, herding, but momentum can reverse sharply during turning points. Second factor is value. It means cheap assets, low PE, price earning ratio, low PB, price to book, historically outperform expensive ones. Value rewards patience, but it can underperform for long cycles, like during the 2010s tech boom. Third factor is quality. It means companies with strong profitability, low leverage, and stable earnings show resilience. Yet when everyone wants quality, valuations can stretch. Fourth factor is high dividend. It is a factor linked to high dividend companies. A high yield for a stock can be attractive, but not always safe. Focus on sustainability of dividends, not yield traps. Five, low volatility. Lower volatility portfolios often deliver better risk-adjusted returns, the famous low-vol anomaly. The trade-off is sector concentration, typically in utilities and staples. 6. Size. Smaller companies outperform over time due to growth potential, though with more volatility and liquidity risk. From theory to practice, so how can you use this in your own analysis? 
Apply these factors to real data, not opinions. And here's the fun part. We'll decide together. In the comments below, tell us which stock, sector or ETF you'd like us to analyze in a future episode. We'll pick one suggestion and walk through a complete factor breakdown. That's how professionals think, with data, collaboration and transparency. Final takeaway. Shutdown is the elephant in the room. It will decide how investors behave. And remember, professionals don't predict. They prepare. If you found this useful, subscribe, share your comment below and stay strategic.